What's up guys, assalamu alaikum, this is Puya. in the story I'm going to show you how to install Jupyter Notebook and I'm going to introduce some of its features which make it convenient to use and we're going to run some Python codes within Jupyter Notebook. If you have no experience with Python, don't worry, in the tutorial uh, we're not going to focus on Python, just we are setting a stage for the next videos in which we will cover the Python from scratch. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, create a directory that you want to save your files. For example, my file is a Jupyter Notebook Introduction, which is here. I'm going to show you how to create one. To open the um, CMD or terminal uh, in Linux, you can right click on your uh, folder and there should be something like open terminal or uh, you can open up the terminal using Control alt t and just um, cd to this directory in windows click on this task bar here uh, in this address bar here and type in cmd and hit enter it will open up your terminal in the exact uh, directory in the exact path so first of all, you need to have conda installed because our series will be based on will be based in conda. So uh, okay, my conda is installed. If you don't have conda installed on your machine, uh, check out my previous video in which I uh, explain how to install mini conda. For uh, this series, I have created an environment. Which is called uh, let me make it. Which is called IntruPy. Yes, I'm not mistaken. No, I'm not mistaken. That's true. IntruPy, as you see, it's here indicates that uh, whatever we do is going to be uh, is going to be based on this IntruPy environment. Uh, again, in the previous video, I talk about how to create different environments, uh, environment, virtual environments. So. How to install Jupyter Notebook? Simply just type in type install Jupyter Notebook, hit enter. Okay, we shall wait a little bit till it, it finishes. Okay, installation is over. So let's open Jupyter Notebook. Open Jupyter Notebook, just type in Jupyter Notebook and hit enter. It will open localhost. Here, okay, localhost 8088. And it run when it says localhost, it means yeah, it, it is running on your local machine. Okay, to create a new notebook, you click on this new on the top corner of your screen and click on Python 3. You do that, it opens up uh, a Jupyter notebook like this. Rename your file, click on this untitled, which is the name, and I'm gonna name it test because I want to remove it and just rename it. So let's see the directory. As I said, if you open up your Jupyter Notebook in a directory, everything that you create will going to be created in that exact directory. We created test. And it is here, test.ipymb, which stands for Interactive Python Notebook, which we're going to talk about it uh, in a while. So, okay, that's how you can create a notebook. Let me open up the notebook that I have pre prepared for this video. So, okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's it. So, what are these? Each Jupyter Notebook is contained of several cells. All of these are different cells. As you can see, I click on them. Each of them are a separate cell. Inside this cell, you can type in your code or you can type in some comments. And just as you can see, comments can have different styles in uh, Jupyter Notebook. So, I'm going to delete this cell using dd if you click two times on dd it removes the cell so how to run a cell this is the cell which i want to run it says print hello world print print 
my name, blah, blah, blah. To run it, so you can click on, uh, you can enter shift, enter, or control, enter. There are several ways to run a cell, or you can click on the cell and then click on this run button in the toolbar. Uh, toolbar. All of them just run the cell. So, in each cell, you can type in your Python code. You can code uh, everything that you want. It's up to you. But you also can convert a cell to markdown. Look, this cell, this cell's type is code, you, and this cell's type is markdown. You can create a cell, and just using this plus mark or using A or B. Uh, each these cells, um, by default, uh, there's uh, the uh, the type is code. But you can change the type, for example, to markdown. When you change the type to markdown, you can code uh, your instructions, your comments, your notes, whatever you got, which are not code. You can uh, you can code them in this markdown cell. And there are some rules and syntaxes for this. For example, if you put a single hashtag, it's going to create uh, a header with number one header or the biggest header. And if you uh, if you put two hashtags, if you type two hashtags, it's going, the second header will be a little smaller than the first one. Or you can create list or bullets like this. And you can do everything that you want like this, for example, and run this. I have said, for example, I have mentioned here that my name is Madi. This is my email, how you can contact me. And this is, for example, my GitHub uh, account address. You can check my GitHub account. You can follow me on GitHub and other uh, capabilities that um, and watch out my watch my repositories on GitHub. And you can even uh, use LaTeX in your Jupyter Notebook, as is seen here, for example, here is a score, uh, a score root of x, and you can use the exact uh, LaTeX syntax, and Jupyter Notebook understands it and prints it out uh, like LaTeX does. For example, here there are more instructions, for example, to create a cell above the selected cell, enter A. For example, when I click on a cell, it, it becomes a selected cell. No, and if you want to uh, make a set, to make a setting, change a setting, or whatever, like A, B, blah, 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 you need to click on the uh, left of the cell to make it uh, blue. This color should be blue. When it is blue, it indicates whatever keyword you enter, it's going to change the setting of the cell. Whenever you click in this section of the cell, and you see this cursor blinking here, which it means whatever uh, keyword, uh, whatever keys you type in with your keyboard is going to be typed inside the cell, like print, like whatever. So, for example, I want to create a cell above this cell. I click on this, I select it, and I enter A. As you can see, there is an empty cell up here. To remove it, to delete it, you can click double D and it will be removed. And the A is the same. So, what uh, you can also interrupt the kernel. What is kernel? Kernel is the main core that runs this uh, Python code, understands this syntax, and all of this is based on kernel. Kernel is responsible for that. Uh, it mainly runs the Python code. So, for example, here, these codes are executed using kernel. Again, if you don't, uh, if you have no uh, experience with Python, or if you don't know what this print is, this is just a, a built-in function in Python that prints whatever string that you give it uh, as an input to it. And uh, again, it kernel runs this code. So, what is why we should need to interrupt? kernel this is a python code which this is a loop which runs forever okay because it's while true and there's nothing to uh break it or whatever and the condition is always true and it will be run it will be last it will last forever 
In this case, if you run another cell, you can see that there is a star sign here or asterisk sign here. It indicates that uh, the kernel is easy. Okay, it's easy running this code or running previous codes. In this case, there are no asterisks before this. All of them has a number which shows the order of running. It means it has been run for the first for the fourth time as the fourth command. And this asterisk as being called first the star sign, it says that it's busy. And the next cells that you want to run, they won't because the kernel is busy. In this case, maybe you have made a mistake in the core in the code, or maybe you're processing a very huge text file or you're running a complicated core code and you, you don't want to continue the, uh, the running okay in that case you can click uh, you can enter two times i or you can click on this uh, score sign or you can go to this kernel and click and interrupt all three of them do the same thing so i'm going to interrupt the cell yeah it's interrupted and right now you can run the other cells and the star signs won't show up because it was the kernel uh, ran the code and finished and the kernel is uh, ready to run the other codes it's not busy anymore so this is what you should do when anything interrupts uh, when anything gets stuck so why does it call interactive? As uh, you may have guessed by now, when you run a code, it shows you the output and it lets you do whatever you want on each cell. And more importantly, if you, for example, create a variable, you can access to that variable from uh, other cells, from different cells than the one it has been created in. As you can see, I created variable in this cell and i can access it from another cell and it doesn't necessarily need to be below the one that in which it has been created it can for example we can copy it here it works as you can see it interactively answers you and it doesn't remove uh, it doesn't um, empty empty the ram after it creates a variable or after it runs the code that's where that make it very convenient to work with the Jupyter Notebook. If you're creating different variables and, for example, you're trying to do um, some complicated codes with the data and you want to interactively, for example, uh, show the pictures, show the images, uh, print the graph, uh, the graphs, and other stuff. Jupyter Notebook could be the best answer and for these reasons we are going to use Jupyter Notebook in, in this series. So let me remove this one and the last part that we want to talk about uh, Jupyter Notebook is how to restart the kernel. Consider that you have created a very huge variable inside your uh, Jupyter Notebook. As I said, Jupyter Notebook does not remove uh, the, the variables. In that case, you get some options to just remove everything and start from the beginning. Uh, you can click on the kernel and you can restart it. But when you restart the code, let me restart it once. As it uh, yeah, it restarted the code. If uh, if I want to access to variable, it's going to say name error. Name variable is not defined, but so we know that we defined it. But it was in the previous kernel. We restarted the kernel. The previous kernel is gone now. This is a new kernel, and there are no variables on it. Okay. If you want, you have to again create the variable. In this case. Again, I can have access to it. There are several options for restarting. You can restart and create the outputs, or you can restart and uh, run them all from the beginning, or you can reconnect the kernel. Or even you can change the kernel, but there is only one Python kernel. For example, you may have Python 2 as your kernel as well, which is not the case right now because most of the people are using almost 95% of the uh, Python programmers are using uh, 
Python 3. That's what I believe. Maybe the numbers are not correct. Anyway, there's another section, this cell. And in this cell, you can see where we talked about this, how to run cells, control enter, shift enter, alt enter, or we can click on the run exactly like this one, restart and run all, or run all from the beginning. Here you can change the cell type. Again, I showed you it is possible from this toolbar as well. Or you can toggle the outputs. Toggle the output just, uh, for example, this is print cell, select the cell. I want to click on toggle the output. It's going to just uh, exactly what it says, toggle the output. It hides the output or let me, you can do it with clicking on the section as well. Or uh, again, if you click on toggle, it will show it. Or you can uh, clear the output. It will completely clear its output. Okay, I need to run it again to show the output as well. So uh, that's it for this video. You can have access to the code in this repository, intro to Python. I'm gonna put this link uh, in the video's descriptions. Uh, please start a project, subscribe the channel, and like the video, and click on the bell uh, button so you would be notified of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.